Hi, hello, I'm standing here looking at my notes. What to do next in your network marketing business? So this is for you who don't know what the next step is and you're not ready yet to invest or commit yourself to go into some training or some action or buy something uh, to move your business forward. So I'm gonna share with you a three step tool that is very important for you to take that would really help you to move your business forward. So my name is Kim Bartlett, helping you as a network marketer to bring your business online to get more prospects and leads in for your business to grow and to, for you to achieve the goal or the goals you have set up. And the reason I'm emphasizing goals is because that's what I'm going to talk about. So what you're going to do then, and what I want to tell first that this is not about, I'm not going to sell, try to sell you anything. This, the reason I'm saying this is because it's a commitment I have to you for the next, it's about two weeks left now of not trying to do anything like that because I want to connect more with you, uh, ideally have conversations with you, private conversations to find out more about you and specific, specifically what your struggles are. So anyway, what we're going to do, goals. So bring your goals out and if you haven't got goals for your business, create them. So we all have goals for our business, I would say we all have for my network, uh, for my, for our network marketing business. I remember far back, it was not just my network marketing business, but also personal development trainings and courses and stuff like that. Part of it was to set up goals and I did, I did set up goals and one of them, the first one, money, 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 money. And I also remember I set such a high, like earn millions, not, not, no, not really, but loads of money. And I could feel immediately, feel like a distance, it's not going to happen. But I did write them down and I also remember, oh, buy a new car, um, house, two houses, one in Sweden and one in the UK where we live. And I don't know, it's Sweden, yeah, it's over there somewhere. And uh, travel around the world to Iceland, South America, <clears throat> all good stuff, good goals, but I had no, I forgot about them. As soon as I came back home and put them away and off, they, they were gone. So what you need to do, and you might have heard this before, you need to connect to them. And I learned that too uh, after a few years, so you really need to connect with them. And I had no idea how to do it. So I was, I was trying, I was sitting doing visualizing, trying to, okay, traveling to whatever it was and a car. But it's like, no, <laughs> it was kind of, I gave up on it. I thought, yeah, okay, I need to have goals. If I plant some goals over there, it might happen. So. I got my notes here, here to, how to see, how to, yeah, how do you then connect to your goals? This is important. This is what we're going to come to now. So put your goals aside, or maybe that way, or whatever way you want to put them. Put them aside for now. P pause them. So what you're going to do is to figure out, and this is about you, what drives you in life. In life, and uh, yes, what drives you in life, really, what sparks you. What in, uh, gives you motivation, inspiration. And this is, we're going to sort out, try to find out, each one of you, by the way, uh, um, what triggers you, emotions, emotions, any emotions from anger, sadness, irritation, frustration, happiness, jolly, you know, all emotions that triggers. Emotions are very real to us. It's very real when we feel emotions. So your job is, to find out, you can, one re way to do it is to look around in your life. So from day, day to day basis, what kind of situations, what happened in the, uh, on the street, in the shop or driving or whatever, what, what irritates your frustration, makes you happy and go, oh, uh, that kind of stuff and be observant about that. And so that, that then you can start to write down, this is what I'm saying, so sit down and write down or stand up or lay down or whatever you want to do, but pin this down, your, what triggers your emotions. Another way to do it, which I love, is to look into, what, for example, what books do you love reading? What kind of books? What kind of movies and films do you love watching? 
uh, what um, yeah, a podcasts, podcast, what type of podcast is uh, your favorite? And, and yeah, always been like a mm, juice for you to listen to. What else have I dot, got? Dot? Um, yeah, books, films, um, TV, and, and the podcasts. It's just a few examples. You might have more examples as well. So, and, and so what type of, so for example, are they, when we talk about TV and films and movies, uh, so uh, my TV is over there, as you see, I look, I look at my TV, very helpful. So, <clears throat> are they, for example, sitcoms, uh, romantic comedies, uh, hero superheroes, films, um, or mm, detectives, mm, detectives. So then we come to, so that was the first step, by the way. So I've talked about three steps. What I just talked to you about is to figure out what moves you, what triggers your emotions. That's the first one. The second step is to find out the reason why am I, in this case, attracted to or love detectives. I can remember since I was a little girl of four or something, uh, I, I watched Colombo. We, I mean, I'm from Sweden. I lived in Sweden at the time. Sweden is a far up Nordic country, by the way. <laughs> Um, okay, so Colombo, that's where it started. And since then, I've always been a detective, love that detective kind of <clears throat> uh, stuff. So, what triggers emotions for me? So, I started to look into what is it about detectives? And what it is, is maybe quite obvious, is injustice. Justice, injustice, unfairness. That is the drive for me. So, I know when, when an episode ends, with the, they didn't solve the crime and the, the criminal is off, they have to let the person go. My God, for a while, for a few minutes afterwards or 50 minutes or something, I'm like, no, this is not right. And when they do solve crimes and get the person away, <laughs> I'm like, yay, this is how it should be. Now, this is also in life for me. It's not just on TV and reading detective books. So when I see injustice and fairness, it really, it really triggers emotions in me. So it's, it's something in me. So now the next step, number three, is to look into, they don't have to, but it's good if you can. So what is it about in, uh, injustice or unfairness that triggers me? And that is, for me, is from school that uh, I struggled in school. I struggled a lot to become even... Um, an average in, in grades. I have to work very, very, very hard. I remember comparing to my friends and school friends and they were, it was much easier for them. So I started to think that I wasn't clever enough. And also I didn't fit in, I didn't fit in with other people and groups or other children and groups. And also I didn't fit in in school. I didn't conform to sit in that bench uh, on the chair and taking in information uh, or being taught in the way they did those days um, and uh, growing up and also I was a bit of a loner and I was different, I was a bit weird, I, I heard people or children say I was a bit weird, uh, odd person, still, still am. Um, anyway, growing up I realized I actually quite like being a loner and I love being around people so it's about learning to know about yourself more as well. So I love being around people. I'm a bit of a loner. Yes, I am different. <laughs> and uh, I am who I am, and we all are. And, uh, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But until recently, I have always believed I can't be successful in the business and uh, network marketing, in my network marketing business because of this. So for example, I have a different learning style, which I found out later in my life. And many, many people and children have that. But anyway, I struggle with that, grow up with that, and then have a belief that because of I'm not clever enough and I don't have an academic background and all that shibaba <laughs> um, have stopped me from moving on with my business. So where, where do I want to go with this? So then figure out that reason. Now I know that I love to work with people who are like I am or was. People that struggled in school, um, didn't fit in, 
and grow up believing that they can never be successful in running their own business. Actually, they probably didn't think, you didn't probably didn't think that when you grow up, I'm not going to be successful in my network marketing business. Of course, when you're now grown up and, and trying to make it work, that is where you <clears throat> is stopping you. So anyway, um, now when you have this clear, this is the people you would love to work with. Because you don't have to, but obviously it's a more of a connection, it's a fire, it's a drive, it's a spark in you because it touches you. It touches you, remember, you remember how it was when you grew up or whatever memory you have of something that sparks for you. And you're using the TV, books or whatever it is as a channel to come into what this is. So then imagine you have this, when you have this clear for you, this is what triggers you, this is feel, makes you feel more alive and uh, have work with these people. I want to say, I was going to say kind of people, I don't mean that. To work with a target market like network marketers, as I do, you are my target market as a network marketer and the characteristics of a person are these characteristics that sparks something in you. So then when you're revisiting, you bring your goals back in again to the room and look at those goals and then you have with you that these are the people that you are going to work with, with these issues, this in the background, you're going to help and serve them. When you have that, there's a more connection to your goals. So those goals is an effect of that you're helping and serving these people to their success. Now here's one more thing I wanted to say. I forgot because of these goal setting money <laughs> is often the very first of course is I would say is all of us have that as a first goal x amount of dollars or uh, pounds or Swedish krona or whatever it is and uh, have that in front of you r trying to succeed in your business or make your business work is not the most effective way to do it by doing this to to connect to the reasons while you tr are triggered by certain things in life uh, and, and the background, the reason background to this from childhood perhaps, will uh, help you to connect to working and service people first and then the money come, come later. It's an effect, which is nice when that happens, I tell you. So there we go, so this is your homework, this is your practice to, to do this and have fun being a detective Maybe you can invite a friend or family, have a couple of glasses of wine or beer or water or whatever it is, have a couple of snacks and talk through like a fun thing to do, like a brainstorm. Who, who are you really? I mean, in, in, in day to day situations, there might be things they see about you and know about you, you have never thought about because it's so natural to you. So dig into it, have fun. And when you have this more, you're going to be more congruent with your goals. And the goal is going to be more like part of your business. Have this set and then eventually, quite soon, in a couple of weeks perhaps, you will be ready to invest something, uh, invest in some program or, or method or w which I'm using in my business. So it's a little bit of selling here at the end, but I'm not going to tell you or give you any link or anything. So <laughs> have fun with this and have a lovely weekend and I'll see you here on Monday. Take care then. Bye bye. Yeah, lunch, of course, lunch. Bye.